Okay, so we have the equation negative 7NP minus 9M is equal to 2NP. And what we want to do here is solve for P. In other words, we want to rearrange this equation such that it's written as P is equal to then whatever it's equal to, right? And uh, this is an interesting problem because we have the variables P, we also have an N, and we also have an M. Okay, so this is an example of um, a problem for solving for the indicated variable where there's multiple variables going on in an equation. This is a very, very important algebra skill and uh, comes up, you know, all the time, not only in algebra, but like in science classes where you're dealing with formulas and you're asked to solve for one of the variables in this formula. Okay, so... Um, for whatever reason, this seems to give a lot of algebra students uh, some trouble, but we're going to go ahead and dispatch with that trouble. By the time you walk away from this video, you're certainly going to increase your knowledge and skill to be able to handle a problem like this. And um, if you are new to my YouTube channel, check out my um, video on solving for the indicated variable in my algebra playlist. I've done a lot of um, uh, videos on this topic. Of course, we're going to continue to practice this skill here in just a second. But uh, check out that video if you feel like you can't do this problem. But uh, stick around anyways, because I think by the time you uh, finish this video, you will be able to not only do this problem, but do other problems as well. Okay, so before we get into this problem, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs. There is, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I offer over 100 plus courses. Um, obviously, I have the big courses like Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. Um, I'm soon going to be launching my pre-calculus course. I also have pre-algebra, college algebra. Uh, but I also have many, many, many specialty courses like uh, SAT Math Prep, uh, GED, uh, teacher certification courses, college placement courses. So if you are reviewing uh, for a particular type of test, I have uh, many, many courses for specific test prep uh, needs. So you could check that out uh, also just follow the link in the description of this video. But all my courses are super comprehensive, literally it's taken me over 10 years to build. Um, uh, comprehensive lessons and thousands of problems solved, all video based. But um, if you need help in math, I think you'll really like my math help program. Now, one thing that I must stress to you, if you are a math student, then I assume that you are um, either studying and preparing for a test or uh, in a math class. I have to stress to you my golden rule of mathematics, and this is something that I've developed over decades of teaching math. It's just something I've seen over and over again, and that is the following. Those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who don't take any math notes, or maybe they take math notes every other week, or they take sloppy math notes, or they're like, I don't need to take math notes, I have a photographic memory, or maybe my best friends in the, my class and they take my notes for me, you know, whatever the case is, because, you know, you got to have that cell phone, you got to be checking in on your social media. And, you know, during math class is a perfect time to be doing your homework for another class. Listen, I get it. I was a student one time and uh, I made all those mistakes, but you end up paying a price for those things. The one thing I will say that luckily that they, uh, when I was a student, we didn't have smartphones because, boy, I tell you, if I had a phone back in those days, I would be really, really lost. So I understand the temptation with your cell phone, but you have to really, really work hard at remaining focused. And there's no other better activity to remaining focused than, than taking notes. You have to take notes. So if you're not taking great notes or if you're taking good notes, make them great. There's always room for improvement. The better your notes, the better your, your math understanding and that's going to be uh, reflective in your grades. But in the meantime, if you're not there yet with your notes, you need something to study from. So I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So we have this equation here we want to solve for P. In other words, we want to rewrite this equation in terms of p so it's going to be p equals that's what we want and if you notice here i have these variables i have n m and of course i have p so 
I have to get all these P's together and I'm going to have to shuffle all these other variables N and M onto the other side. Okay, so let's do a quick review about how to solve for an indicated um, uh, variable in a basic equation. So let's take this F equals M times A. Now, some of you out there might recognize this as the physics formula, force equals mass times acceleration. That's exactly what it is. So right now, this uh, equation is written in terms of F. So we have F is equal to, okay, force is equal to mass times acceleration. But let's write this uh, equation or this formula in terms of A, okay? So how do I do that? Well, if you think you know how to do it, okay, you maybe pause the video and quickly do it. It should take you about five seconds to do this if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, no problem, okay? We're going to do a quick review here. And I think this is going to really help you, you know, um, set up your understanding of what's going on. All right, so how do I solve for A? Okay, now I don't want you guessing here, okay, because we're like, all right, well, I could do this. This is like, I want you to be super confident on why your answer is the way it is. All right, so here's what you do. We're going to think of the variable that we want to solve for or write this equation for. We're going to think of that as the only variable, okay? We're going to think of A as the only variable going on here. And we're going to think of M and F, all other variables, as numbers, okay? Just mentally speaking, we're going to think of these as numeric values. So a good little practice here to do that would just, let's just replace F and M with numbers here for a second. Let's say 10 is equal to 2 times A. So obviously this M, the 2 is in the M position and the 10 is in the F position. So thinking about this equation, if I said solve for A, you would say, hmm, okay, I know how to do that. I would divide both sides of the equation by 2. And so I have 10 divided by 2 is equal to A. Of course, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And that's exactly what we do here. Okay, so the whatever steps that you take to solve an equation or a formula, okay, when you're only thinking of the, the, the variable that you want, isolated, okay, you think of everything else as numbers, well, just conceptually try to follow those steps. And if you have difficulty doing that, do a little example problem like this to help you out. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve for A, and knowing what we just did here, I'm thinking, okay, what did I do? I just divided whatever this was, that's M, I divided both sides of the equation by this, and that's exactly what we need to do. I need to get A by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by M, so I have F over M is equal to A. Obviously, I can't do any division like F over M, that's as simple as it can go. It's not like I got 10 divided by two is, of course, five, that's equal to A, but we're dealing with variables here, and that's it. Okay, like one step, that was all you took. But I, you know, it's not about you just getting the answer right. It's about you understanding the concepts here because obviously we have much more complicated formulas uh, and equations that we can be working with to solve for a particular variable. But anytime you get in trouble doing this, if you just substitute in numeric values and just think about those steps that you would take, well, then you're on the right track. Okay, so this... Uh, uh, equation here, this formula, force divided by mass is equal to acceleration. Well, this is uh, just, you know, it's equivalent. The relationship is equivalent to force is equal to mass times acceleration. We didn't break this. We're just writing this relationship in terms of another variable, all right? So when you're solving for a particular variable, we're not breaking the equation. We're not changing it. We're just rewriting it in a different way. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into the problem. And if you think you could do this problem now, just after that quick review, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. You know, of course, you can see my um, uh, work here, but, you know, maybe just look away and think about, think about it for a second. But let's solve for P. And what we need to do is get all the P's together. So think about when you're solving an equation, we want all the variables on the left-hand side and all the numbers on the right. Now, one thing I kind of failed to uh, state, and I'll state it now, is you need to know how to solve equations already, I mean, like basic linear equations, things like that. You already need to have strong equation solving skills before you take on how to solve um, for a particular variable and there's multiple variables going on. So if you don't know 
or if you're a little rusty on solving equations, I have uh, plenty of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on equation solving you can uh, review. But the main idea is you want to get the variables to the left and your numbers to the right. Now the only variable, because I'm solving for P here, the only variables I'm concerned with is the variable P. Okay, So all other numbers and uh, variables here, okay, which in this case I have an M and I have an N, are eventually going to end up on the right-hand side. Okay, so that's you know kind of conceptually we're kind of thinking in those terms. So here I have a p. Okay, that's you know I'm considering that as part of my variable. I'm going to scoot that guy over to the left, and the way I do that is I subtract negative two and p from both sides of the equation. All right, and here we have an np and an np. So these are like terms. So now I can write this this way: negative seven np minus two. And P, and of course I have this negative 9M, which I'm going to deal with in a second. Now, this negative 9M, M, okay, is one of those variables. It's not P, so I could just think of this as a number. So I want to get it over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 9M to the right-hand side, and it gets me to this. I have 9M here, and I have my negative 7NP minus 2NP. And if you notice what I have, let's go down here. Uh, these are like terms, okay? So P is uh, the variables, but I want to add, okay, these uh, coefficients, right? Just remember, think of these as like terms. So if I have a negative 7N and a negative uh, 2N, how many uh, Ns do I have? I have negative 9NP, okay? So I can combine these like terms. And if you're not familiar with like terms, again, you can review this. I have plenty of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. But here's where we're at. We have negative uh, 9NP is equal to 9M. So to solve for P, remember I want P by itself. I could, I could just think of this as a coefficient. Okay, so for example, think of this as 10P is equal to 3. Okay, something like that. This is this is represents a number, and this represents a number. So if you're confused, to get p by itself, I got to divide both sides of the equation by 10. In this case, right? So whatever is in front of that p, I have to divide both sides of the equation by it. So that is negative uh, 9n. I need to divide both sides of the equation by negative 9n. Okay. So I'm showing you that step here, but I actually wrote it out right here. So p is equal to 9m divided by negative 9n, and I can simplify by the 9s cross cancel, so I end up with a negative uh, m over n, so p is equal to negative uh, m divided by n, and that is the answer, okay? So what we just did is rewrite this equation, okay, in terms of p. Now, there's any number of different type of problems you can come up with, uh, you know, like, you know, practice problems. But let's just real quick take a look at something like this, like y equals mx plus b. Now, hopefully you recognize what this is. This is the slope-intercept uh, uh, formula, okay? And oftentimes we want to solve for m, okay? So, or, you know, like a particular, you know, when you're doing, like, systems of equations, you need to rearrange variables, uh, or solve for particular variables all the time in algebra, okay? Especially when we're working with lines, systems, you know, um, I can go on and on and on. It's just one of these skills that you need to know how to do, okay? And of course, you know, when you're working in physics and chemistry, biology, when you're given a formula, you need to know how to, you know, solve for particular variables in that formula. So a problem like this, although it's trivial, you know, this really doesn't mean anything to this other than algebra, practicing algebra, you know, uh, it's a good exercise to uh, to do. For whatever reason, a lot of students struggle with this, and you know, they when they're having difficulty in algebra, it's because they don't have this skill down. And I can understand it's a little abstract in the beginning, but that's why you got to be paying attention. You got to be taking notes, and you got to be practicing, practicing, practicing. Remember, uh, watching someone do math is not the same as you learning math. Okay, for you to get better at math, you have to do the problem yourself. So even like this problem, okay, you watch me do it, uh, do it, you should, you know, pause the video and see if you can do it all by yourself, get that, you know, get the solution. That's the best way to learn math, you know, um, 
It's just no substitute for practicing and paying attention, good note taking. Guess what? It requires work. Okay. And for example, notes or studying math, it is, uh, it does require um, effort. Okay. And it requires skill, but you'll get there. Okay. And my job is to teach you math in a clear and understandable way, a way that you like. Okay. And a way that keeps you motivated. So if this video in some way helped you out and if you enjoyed it in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That would definitely help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math. So, um, you know, on my channel, you can find uh, various playlists, uh, basic to advanced mathematics. Of course, if you want my best math help, check out uh, the resources by following the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.